Okay, welcome back. Uh, sorry that last video had a funny little splice in it, but it was just getting a little bit too long and a little bit carried away. And so I thought I'd make another video now just to focus on this prediction interval. And actually, I'm going to add to the discussion not just the prediction interval, uh, but we'll also incorporate uh, a confidence interval as well. Because they are, they're similar in their calculations. It's not a whole lot of extra work. Um, and it's helpful to see just how they differ. So what we're going to be looking at here, let me just scroll down uh, a little bit. So here we have estimated this equation. I'm not going to use Q's and P's. It'll just be complicated for the price and quantity. Let's just keep it generic. We have Y and we have X. And we estimated here the point estimate was 59.3 and we had a slope of negative uh, 92. So this describes our point estimate of the relationship between x and y. Now like any other point estimate, there's uncertainty in that point estimate. You recall, you know, we've done the most basic one that we did was uh, on the sample mean, where we had an upper limit and we had a lower limit. <laughs> oh my gosh, off to a good start. A lower limit and an upper limit. And we had some level of confidence, let's say 95% confidence that the population mean was somewhere in there. Well, we did that now for these coefficients on this estimated regression equation. So what that means is this linear equation that we estimated, well, this is just a point estimate of that relationship. It's subject to some uncertainty, which means that diagrammatically, it might be a little bit steeper. And if it's a little bit steeper, of course, if it's a little bit steeper, the y-intercept is a little bit higher. So if it's a little bit steeper, it looks something like this, or maybe it looks something like this. Oops, that could be better something like this. So because of this uncertainty in the y-intercept and the slope coefficient, that translates into uh, these all these possibilities as far as the nature of that relationship, the slope and the y-intercept of that relationship. Now I've intentionally drawn these so they all line up, they all f go through this one point x bar and over here, I'm going to redraw this one, I don't like this line. There and this would be y bar. So they'd all cross through there and that's because of that's because of this relationship here. But as we can see, if we're going to use this for prediction purposes or estimation purposes, well, we can take any value for that independent variable and put that into our estimated regression equation and here we get a predicted value, y hat. Well, y hat y hat is just our point estimate of that average value for y, for some given level of x, call it x star. So again, as a point estimate, well, if that's a point estimate for some average value, we can also calculate a confidence interval around that point estimate. And so maybe the true expected value, the true average value of y, is somewhere within there. And so we can see that based on the uncertainty that exists in that point estimate of the relationship. So for example, maybe it's somewhere way up here. If that slope is a little bit flatter and the y-intercept's a little bit lower, then for that level of interest of the independent variable, our point estimate is here, but it could range given the uncertainty oops, in our estimate for those co parameters, it could range between here and here. So that would be a confidence interval for that expected value of y. What this problem is asking us to do is a prediction interval. And so what that is, is rather than an interval estimate for an average value of y, so rather than an interval estimate for this expected value of y, it's actually an interval estimate for a precise value of y. So what that means is, looking at this confidence interval that we have here, this is an interval estimate for an average. Around an average exists a distribution of observations. So let's say that our true population average is somewhere closer to this lower limit. Well, if that's the case, there exists around that average 
a distribution of observations. Similarly, if the population average or population mean is closer to that upper limit, well, there exists a distribution of observations around that average as well. So what the prediction interval takes into account is that, let me skew that line, it takes into account that distribution of observations. So again, if this is the upper limit for the, the average number of observations, well, there would exist see if I can draw this, there would exist a distribution, something like this, a distribution of observations around that average. Similarly down here, if that's the lower limit for that average, there would exist also a distribution around that average. So the prediction interval will always be wider than a confidence interval because it incorporates that distribution of observations. So the interpretation is a little bit different too and uh, we'll, we'll see that when we get there because now it's an interval estimate for a specific quantity in this case, not an average quantity. So let's do the calculations and uh, we'll see how this goes. Now, first of all, before we do the calculations, we can see where these intervals are going to be the smallest, right? As, as we move away from this point here, x bar and y bar, that uncertainty in the y-intercept and the slope, it increases, that, that range increases. This distance increases as we move away from that average value. And so what that means is our confidence intervals and our prediction intervals they're going to get wider and wider as we move to either side. As we move to either side of that average value for the independent variable, our confidence intervals and our prediction intervals, they just grow in size because this uncertainty in those parameter estimates, that any small amount of uncertainty, it grows. It gets larger as we move away from x bar. So our, our formulas that we need here will have uh, our our predicted value for y hat plus or minus this critical value, same degrees of freedom as MSE, same that we've been using, times the standard error of the regression. Now this one will be for a confidence interval estimate. So this is 1 over n uh, plus, here we'll have x star, so that level of the independent variable of interest, its distance from the mean, squared and divided by the variance in the independent variable. So this is our formula for the confidence interval estimate. The formula for the prediction interval estimate is very similar. It's that same, same critical value, same standard error of the regression. All that's different now is that we take into account this distribution of observations around that point and that has a uh, standard deviation or variance of s. So here we just add a 1. So it's 1 times s plus 1 over n plus the same thing. And xi x bar squared. Okay, so you can see the formulas are very different. You can see the, the formula for the predicted value. It's going to be a little bit larger because it takes into account that additional distribution around around that mean. So let's get into our calculations here. So this calculation that's set up, it's going to be a little bit simpler to do because in the problem we were asked specifically uh, to develop a prediction interval estimate for the quantity demanded at a price of 56. Well, wouldn't you know it, that's exactly our mean. So that's going to shortcut uh, it'll shorten our, our calculations a little bit because look what happens in the numerator up here. If our level of interest of the independent variable is equal to 56 and our mean value of that independent variable is 56, well, we're developing an interval estimate right around that point where there's the least amount of, of uncertainty or at least the least amount of influence from this uncertainty on our predicted values. So this term here, because x star is equal to x bar, this term is 0, this term here is 0, which means that we can 
shorten our calculations a little bit, this piece just disappears. We don't even have to worry about it because that numerator is equal to zero. So let's uh, let's plug in some numbers here. Let me just scroll. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it here, I guess. I'm running out of room all the time. So let's put in our x bar is 56. So what's our predicted value going to be at 56? If this is 59.3 minus 0.92 times 56, that predicted value, 59.3 minus 0.92 times 56, 7.78. Is that a surprise? It shouldn't be a surprise. 7.78. It should be that mean. I guess there's some rounding error in here, but uh, we're pretty close. So there's our predicted value, 7.78. 7.78 plus or minus. This critical value is 3.182. We've already found that in some of our other calculations. Times, we'll do this one first. So this is 1 over 5, and that's it. That's simple enough. Uh, oops, I forgot my S. Our standard error of the regression, I need this one. 1.72. 1.72 times square root of 1 over 5. This, again, <laughs> there's so many similarities here. This really just degenerates into something that we saw back in module 9. This is going to be x, uh, the, the y hat plus or minus the critical value uh, times s over root n. If you've seen previous videos in module 9, this is exactly the, the formula, different notation, uh, but exactly the same formula for a confidence interval around a, around a mean, a sample mean. So anyways, let's carry on, 778 plus or minus, let's figure out this margin of error. So this is oops, 1 divided by 5 square root times 1.72 times 3.182 equals, so margin of error is 2 point, let's just call it 2.5, too many decimals in here. Okay, so this is going to be, where can I put this in here, right there. Okay, so we have our point estimate, 778, and then we have our upper limit for the confidence interval, 7.78 plus 2.5, 10.28, and the lower limit, 7.78 minus 2.5, 5.28. So there's our confidence interval for the expected value of y. So what this means is that if uh, our price, that is our, our independent variable, if price is $56, my point estimate is that we'll sell an average uh, uh, of 7.78, so quantity will be 7.78. Confidence interval at a price of $56, we can expect to sell an average of between 5.28 and 10.28. Now we'll do the, the prediction interval, which is all very similar. This is still that same standard error, 1.72. And now this is times 1 plus 1.5. And again, this term is all 0, so we don't need that. So I'll get this calculator out again. And this is going to be 1 plus 1 over 5 and square root that times 1.72 times 3.182. So there, there's my margin of error, of, let's just call that 6. And so now, let me just scroll up a little bit here, we have our prediction interval that will always be a little bit wider. So this will be 6 plus 7.78 so 13 point, let's call that 13.8. And the lower limit, 7.78 minus 6, 1.78.
Okay, so again, point estimates in the middle. So, wrapping this all together. If our price at a price of $56, our average quantity sold will be uh, 7.78. So average quantity demanded, 7.78. To, to describe the confidence interval means that if we set the price at $56, uh, we can expect to sell an average of between 5.3 and 10.3. So quantity demanded, the average quantity demanded will be between 5.3 and 10.3. The prediction interval now with a price at 56, quantity demanded, so specific quantity demanded will be between 1.8 and 13.8. So the difference here, this is a 95% interval estimate for an average. So the average will be between 5.3 and 10.3. This is a 95% interval estimate for the specific amount. So at a price of 56, quantity specific quantity demanded will be between 1.8 and 13.8. Okay, so I'm glad I started another video for this. It's turned out to be uh, 16 minutes. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. I think we'll do at least uh, at least one more exercise here. So thank you very much for watching, and I certainly hope it was helpful. Bye-bye.